Hello and thank you for watching this whiteboard presentation. My name is David Whitaker and I work as a process specialist at Camden BRI. Today I'm going to talk about thermal process optimization based on the analysis of a thermal process validation study. This presentation follows on from my previous presentation on thermal process validation and we're going to talk a little bit about how the data and results can be interpreted from the validation study to actually not only understand whether it hits a minimum level from a food safety point of view, but also to understand how to further optimise that thermal process. Now, what, is, what do we mean by thermal process optimization? Well, we're not only looking at that minimum level to say whether a validation is passed or not, we're also looking to make sure that the process isn't over process, so the product, excuse me, isn't over-processed. So we're looking at it from the other point of view as well, making sure that over-processing is absolutely minimised. Because over-processing is, is a bad thing. It's bad for the product quality, potentially, depending on the product, and it can actually have an impact, detrimental impact, on the nutritional attributes of the food in question, as well as wasting energy and valuable time and efforts in the factory. So. We want to keep that overprocess into a minimum. So it's really about understanding the optimal um, time and temperature for um, use during a thermal process on your specific product. So we're going to get data that looks a little bit like this, taken from a thermal process validation study, of course. And we have three plots on the graph. We have in red the, envir the environment temperature. So that is the temperature of the environment within the processing equipment, so within a retort within a uh, kettle or oven, and that is the temperature that the product is seeing through the process. This in blue, then, is the product temperature, and this is taken you know, directly from the validation study, and of course, as part of the validation, in the, you know, there should be a number of replicates, and, and we would recommend taking the worst case of, of your many replicates and, and using this as your point of reference when looking to optimise the thermal process. Then finally, the, the, the lethality. So that is the lethal effect accumulating over time of the heat on the product. And normally this needs to reach a specific, uh, specific level to show whether the process is safe, is, is acceptable on the product to make it safe. Now, when we're actually optimizing then, we're using all the, this plot and this data, but considering three points to help us understand whether we can take some time potentially off the thermal process to optimise it. We need to understand what our absolute minimum lethality is. So in this example, we're talking about a sterilisation process. So sterilisation worldwide is known to have a minimum level of lethality of three minutes. That is known as F0. So our absolute minimum level in this example would be the point at which the lethality reaches three minutes. So this far into the process, you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever the process, total process time is. And that is the absolute minimum level for food safety. But we also need to understand then a safety factor. Now this safety factor depends on the process and the product. And it's something, it's, it's something based on an essentially a risk assessment. It's the amount of lethality we, we want to actually achieve, divided by what our absolute minimum is. So in this example, let's say we want to get a target of six minutes. That's our in-house manufactured target for this product is six minutes. But it's a sterilization process, and we know the absolute minimum is three minutes. So six over three gives you two. SF, safety factor, equals two. So the safety factor can depend on a number of things, it can depend on it, but really we're looking at kind of how robust that thermal process is, how variable it is, how repeatable it is. So if we've done our validation and we've got a number of different results for lethality of products, different samples of product, we need to be thinking about how consistent those results are. The more consistent, the lower number you can have for your safety factor. If they're very inconsistent, we might be looking for safety factors of three or four, you know, having an in-house F0 target of over 10, perhaps. 
if we're really, really controlled and we're very confident in our validation and our process, then we might have something a bit smaller. Maybe we'll have an in-house target of F0 equals 4 instead of 6. But in this example, we've gone for the typical, uh, quite a typical target of 6 minutes lethality. Let's plot this on here. 6 minutes of lethality on here. So a little bit further into the process. The other key point when considering um, the other key point when considering uh, optimization is whether to use the heating, the cook, and or the cooling phase as part of the lethality accumulated. So let me show you what I mean. So in this in this example, the environment temperature dictates three different um, three different phases or or set three different set points even on in in the actual program or the or the cycle of the of the cook. We'd have the heating. And there might be more than this in some instances, but in this case, in this simplistic case, heating, the cook phase, and the cooling phase. And the question is, well, we're going to have to use something, so we'll use the cook phase, of course. That is typically the most controlled part of the, of the program. Maybe we'd use the heating phase, because that can also be quite controlled. But the cooling phase, typically the temperatures are not that controlled. And in a lot of cases, like we're talking about ovens, the product actually comes out of the cooking vessel to cool, and then there's no control on the temperature um, on the temperature of the product. Then, so in that case, we absolutely could not use cooling. Um, so, let's assume our example: we're not going to use cooling, which in most cases we would recommend not to do. Our absolute, our maximum lethality from the process then is about 10 minutes. So, bearing all this in mind, our three points for optimization. And looking at our data, we then need to make a decision, can we optimize? Well, the answer in this example would be yes, because our, at the end of the cook phase, we've got 10 minutes of lethality accumulated. So it's over our in-house target of 6, which has been established to give us a safety factor of 2, because it's 2 times our minimum, absolute minimum. So yes, we in theory, we could take a section of this cook phase out. And because from here to here, from here to here, or here to here, this is essentially we're over processing, we're unnecessarily cooking the product. So we could take that out and optimize our process. Thank you very much for listening.